Whether it's riding world-class roller coasters such as Taran and Fly or getting absolutely soaked on board Chapas, Fantasyland in Germany is home to many incredible rides and it's a bucket list park for so many people. But how do you get there? What's the transportation like? And when you arrive at Fantasyland, where are you going to stay? Well, I'm going to cover all of that in this video. Welcome to the Theme Park Worldwide Travel Guide for Fantasyland. I'm Sean Sandbrook and welcome to the Theme Park Worldwide Travel Guide. In this series, I'm going to be sharing lots of information to make it as easy as possible for you to get out there and enjoy various different theme parks around the world. Now, I'm lucky enough that during my travels, I've managed to experience lots of different parks, but also take away a lot of information about how to get to them, whether it's the cheapest airports to fly from, the trains that you need to get to the parks, and also the best accommodation. And I'm going to be covering all of that in this exciting and informative new series here on Theme Park Worldwide. It's going to start off talking about transportation and then going to move on to accommodation and also as well little hints and tips along the way including where to get some of the best theme park tickets. So here we go let's get started by talking all about Fantasyland. It's located in Brühl, Germany and opened in 1967. Now Fantasyland has become famous all throughout Europe and even across the world for its heavily themed and immersive attractions. Rides such as Taran, Fly, Chiapas, Talican, they've got an absolutely outstanding collection of rides at that park and it is definitely worth visiting. I know it's on the bucket list for many people. Now along with that they've got three fantastic on-site hotels so I'm going to talk about those later in the accommodation section and also as well um, I just want to say about the events uh, what they hold here. They've got a fantastic dinner show, they've got awesome shows throughout the park and also as well a brilliant winter event that is stunning. So there's so many reasons to get out there to Fantasyland and of course you can check out our vlogs that we filmed from there here on the channel to get a bit of an idea what they've got on offer at the park. Let's get started then and talk about how you're going to get there. How is your journey into this immersive theme park going to begin? Let's start with transportation. Now I've travelled to Fantasyland using various different modes of transportation. However, most people will of course fly into Germany. If you're going to be doing that, whether it's from the United Kingdom or anywhere else around the world, normally your best bet is to actually head for Cologne Bonn Airport. That's the main airport in the city of Cologne, Germany. Now, if you are going to be heading there from the United Kingdom, Ryanair, Eurowings, Flybe, they all offer flights out there and also you can get some fantastic prices. Um, I've normally found that my best bet is traveling down to Stansted Airport down London and then actually flying out from Stansted to Cologne Bonn and I've had some amazing deals before. I've actually got less than £10 return before, £4.99 each way I got a few years ago which was absolutely incredible and I've mentioned this website before but Skyscanner is absolutely fantastic. I use that website to book loads of my different trips. It's brilliant so I recommend Skyscanner. Nice and easy um, just to, to look at where you're going and also um, get the best deals. But um, yeah, I normally find Ryanair is the cheapest, but depending on where you're flying from in the UK, or of course anywhere else around the world, um, you might want to check different airlines and see what they offer. And of course, using Skyscanner does that all for you as well, which is nice and handy. Now, you got to think when you arrive at Cologne Bonn Airport, how are you going to get to Fantasyland? Now, there's a few different options. In my opinion, the most fun way is using tr public transportation. So what you can actually do is jump on a train directly at Cologne Bonn Airport. You haven't got to travel anywhere to get there. It's literally at the airport. Um, and then it's about a 13-minute train ride into the centre of Cologne. Now, Cologne is the big city, of course, where uh, which is closest to Fantasyland. Now, the park's located in Brühl. That's kind of in the suburbs on the outskirts um, of the city of Cologne but to get there you've kind of got to go into the city to come back out again via train but it's good fun takes about 13 minutes like I say trains run on average every 15 minutes from the airport straight into Cologne um, and once you get there like I say you know you end up in this big station which um, if you're not very experienced with public transport um, then yeah it might be a bit overwhelming but there is a lot of people who will help you out there Germany very friendly I've never had any issues 
issues with asking for help if I've needed to. Um, but yeah, Cologne Bonn uh, Airport has that direct um, train link straight into the city centre, which is perfect. It also means you can enjoy some of the stuff what the city has to offer, which I'll talk about in my tips later in the video. Once you get there, you actually need to get a train from there up to Brule. Now, you can do this nice and easy as well. Again, the trains normally run about every 15 minutes. This journey takes about 35 minutes from what I can remember. Um, but again, it's pretty easy to do and you'll arrive into Brule. Now, there's actually two train stations in Brule. There's Brule itself and Brule Mitt. Um, both of those are served by the Fantasia Line shuttle bus, which is fantastic. And that's where I move on to next. Now, so far, the costs for doing this public transport each, it's not too bad. From what I remember in the past, I've paid about seven, eight euros um, for doing that journey. Of course, that can vary depending on the times and that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, it's quite a cost effective way. Once you arrive to one of those stations in Brule, you've got the Fantasia Line shuttle bus, um, which is brilliant. The timetable can be found at the stations and also on the website for Fantasia Land as well. Um, but yes, it will actually pick you up and for three euros return per person, it will take you straight to the entrance of the park and back again. That journey takes less than 10 minutes. It's not far from the train station at all, and it's nice and easy to navigate. Now, the buses, you can't miss them. Uh, they're usually a big red bus with Fantasyland shuttle wrote on the side. You can't miss them. There's normally lots of other people who are getting them as well. So once you're at the station, if you need help, just ask. People are always out there um, to help. And with smartphones these days as well, you can use Translate if you need to and want to get in and, and to talk a bit of German whilst you're there. Why why not? It's all a part of it um, and part of the experience. But um, yeah, that, it's a really good fun way and quite cost effective. Like I say, less than 15 euros, I'd say, um, each way to, to do that. Um, if you want more of a fun way and also get to see some of the German efficiency and transportation as well. Now, worth pointing out with the shuttle bus, it's also free for kids who are under one meter and also wheelchair users as well. And those with disabilities, you just need to show some proof when you're getting onto the bus. So yeah, that's quite a, an easy option. And like I say, the, the station's right out the front of the park. Now, if you don't fancy that, maybe you want to drive over to Fantasyland. And again, I'm basing this from the UK. You can drive and get the Eurotunnel or a ferry. When you get over into Calais in France, it'll take you around four and a half hours to drive to the park. It's about 260 miles, uh, but it's mostly three main roads uh, that you're traveling on. It's pretty easy stuff until you get right near the park. And even then, it's just an exit off their main autobahn and then straight down to the car parks and hotels so it's really easy for that uh, and it's another fun way to do it. I've done both of these options and the good fun. Um, of course, the public transport, you get to see a little bit more as well. But the car, you have the flexibility with luggage and that sort of thing. And it can sometimes work out the cheapest option. Now, um, yeah, also another option um, for you to do, um, if you don't fancy driving and also you don't fancy using the public transport, is actually flying into Cologne Barn and then booking a private shuttle. If there's maybe three or more of you, this definitely works out the easiest and cheapest option unless you really want to do the trains and public transport book the private shuttle uh, by road it takes less than 20 minutes to get to the park if you're booking it as part of a group which again we've done before it can work out costing you maybe five six euros each if you're splitting it so i'd say if there's a couple of you the train works out cheaper um but yeah if, if you know money's no object for you and you want to get there quicker um then yeah you can book a private shuttle lots of different websites um online for that just check out cologne bonds uh, official airport website and they'll point you in the right direction for um, using their shuttle service and booking a private shuttle to the park. So there are different options. The main options for getting there. I've done all of those. My favourite one to do for the ease of it is actually drive because I normally do it as part of a bigger road trip because there's other parks not far away but that's a complete uh, another travel guide to come at some point in the future. But anyway, you've got there to Fantasyland but where are you going to stay? Let's move on to the accommodation. Now, Fantasyland has got three absolutely fantastic on-site and heavily themed resort hotels. You've got Hotel Matamba, which has got an African theme. You've then got Hotel Lingbao, that's got an Asia theme. And then along with that, Hotel Charles Limburg, which is a steampunk theme. And is actually built in the heart of the new themed area of Ruckberg as well. So there's lots of different options when it comes to on-site accommodation. Um, Lingbao, for example, that has got a pool. It's also got a fantastic bar um, up at the top 
top of the hotel that looks over the park. You get some great views of Taran and Klukheim and the rest of the park from up there as well. Um, but then, of course, you've got the heavily themed um, and beautiful hotel Matamba, which out of the three, that's the, the best option for families, in my opinion. The theming, the size of the rooms um, is absolutely awesome. And I love Matamba. We've actually got videos on the channel um, from two of the hotels, um, Limburg and also Matamba. Um, I've not actually uh, filmed Lingbao, but I will do at some point in the future. But if you want to see them hotel tours, again, you can check them out along with vlogs from Fantasyland, the park itself here on Theme Park Worldwide. Now, um, other perks of staying on site, of course, fantastic food options to do like an Asian buffet um, in Lingbao, um, at, at Charles Lindbergh, you get a fantastic sit down dinner service and you get like an African um, safari food, which you're gonna get at uh, Matamba, which is really good as well. So lots of options. Breakfast is always fantastic as well, um, what you get there at the parks. Uh, and along with that, another fantastic perk which they offer, um, that's not something what they've been offering at the moment because um, of coronavirus, but normally, uh, fingers crossed when you're watching this in the future, that's abolished, that isn't a thing anymore, fingers crossed. Um, but they do offer a fantastic perk which is actually um, some exclusive ride time in the park. It was on Taran and Rake, um, two coasters what they've got there, one thrill of course, another family, um, but yeah, who knows? They might make that fly at some point in the future, or it may stay in Klugheim, or it could change altogether. But um, yeah, that is a fantastic perk of also staying on site there as well. Um, now, yeah, that's you know, there are your on site options, which are great. Off site, there's also some great options as well mostly staying in Brühl. Now, like I say, you can get that shuttle bus to the park. You can actually use that shuttle bus every day if you wanted to travel to the park and back to Brühl and stay somewhere there. Um, if you go on like the likes of Booking.com, Trivago, they have some great deals. Expedia is another one that I use a lot for hotels. Great deals in Brühl, but you do have to think you're further away from the park. One that I do like to stay at off-site though is absolutely fantastic. This is the H Plus Hotel, um, which is in Brule. And this is brilliant because you can actually walk to the park. It takes about 30 minutes, um, just over that. But you know what? Um, it's nice if you fancy a stroll, nice straight to walk up the road, but there's a footpath at the side for that. Um, or you can walk into Brule from there and get the shuttle bus if you wanted to as well. But that's a great option to stay at. It's also a good one to stay at if you're driving out there as well. Um, the H, H Plus Hotel hotel, lots of parking, uh, which is free and included with your stay. And it's worth pointing out if you're staying in the Fantasyland hotels, you also get free parking as well. But um, yeah, this is a great hotel. It actually used to be a Ramada. Um, it rebranded a few years ago, but this is a great place to stay. Um, I really recommend it. Really modern rooms here as well. Um, and it's not too far. It's about two miles away from the park itself. But there's also a lot of B&Bs, little guest houses and other places like that to stay um, all the way around Brule. Um, but direct if you want to be close to the park, I definitely recommend that, um, the on-site hotels or staying in the uh, H+, plus, uh, what there is there as well. So anyway, we're nearly there. So you've traveled all the way to the park. Of course, you've got your accommodation. What do you need next? Theme park tickets. So let's move on to that. Now, when it comes to theme park tickets, I'd say that Fantasyland is pretty fair when it comes to the pricing, especially for the value that you're gonna get out of your visit with all of the different rides, attractions, and shows. But if you are staying on site, you actually get a discount on your tickets and that can all be found on their official website. So that's worth looking into. Of course, if you're staying off site, you're gonna have to pay full price for tickets. If you're on site, they do offer a discount. So, you know, you've got to weigh up your options and that all depends on whether you're traveling as a solo traveler, as a couple, or maybe as a family, you've got to think what's gonna work out the cheapest. And that's the same with them transport options as well, but definitely with theme park tickets and what they offer. Of course, lots of different prizes for adults and kids but also as well, anybody that's four and under is free into Fantasyland, which is great. You also get free entry on your birthday. So if you fancy planning a trip out there on your birthday, take some form of documentation. I'd normally recommend a driving license or a passport, and then you will get a free entry for that one person whose birthday it is. Unless you're in a family where it's all your birthday, then the happy days, you're all getting in for free. But um, that's a great perk what they do at Fantasyland. Along with that, there's also discounts for visitors with disabilities as well so it's definitely worth contacting the park with those options but I would always recommend with Fantasia Land booking directly through the park whether that's staying on site or not 
I'd just recommend booking through the park. There is other places that offer tickets, but for me, um, with Fantasia Land and how they operate, I'd definitely say um, go straight direct to the park. They're the best deals that you're going to get normally, and you know that you've actually got a physical barcode, uh, what has been given to you from Fantasia Land. Now, this isn't always going to be the case with some of these other videos that I'm going to do. I've got lots of different ticket websites and options that we use, but um, with this, I'd normally recommend going straight direct to them um, for the best deals, especially if you're going to be staying on site. Finally then, let's move on to some tips for when you're going to be visiting. Now, Fantasyland does have a fantastic selection of rides, attractions, and shows, and also brilliant events too. However, when it comes to the actual size of the park, it isn't actually very big. If you look here at Google Maps, you can see that the park's not actually huge at all. However, what it does have is fantastic immersive experiences, and it's more quality rather than quantity. And as much as I say that, there's still a fantastic amount of rides throughout the park. Um, so when you are going there, you need to think about how many days you're going to have. If you're only interested in riding the rides once, maybe a couple of re-rides on Taran and Fly, um, and it's not too busy a day depending on when you're visiting, then I would definitely say that one day would certainly satisfy you. If you want lots of different re-rides, see some of the shows, especially at Christmas, seeing the events, ice skating, all that sort of thing, then I'd definitely say two days for the park. And that kind of leads me on to say when to visit. Now, Fantasyland's operations are pretty good. They're always getting the rides out there. Taran's normally running forward trains getting them straight out there fly for a new coaster was running incredibly well too and that's the same with a lot of their rides so i would say there isn't really a bad time to go but i definitely like it during a hot day in the summer and also as well during their winter event which is absolutely fantastic now along with that you've got to think about if you're a family and visiting here what is the for families we talk a lot about the thrill rides but what is the at fantasy land for families there is some fantastic attractions the water rides they've got a rapids which is amazing uh, they've got of course chapel Pass, which is a brilliant flume attraction. They've also got Mouse of Chocolate, which is an interactive dark ride. And they've also got Woozy Town, which has got a selection of family rides too. There's also a couple of different family roller coasters to enjoy. So there is a lot. But when it comes to the very small guests, um, if you're visiting with younger kids, then there isn't loads of attractions. Yes, there's a few that they'd be able to enjoy, but not loads. So I'd definitely think about that if you are planning to visit. Have a good look at the height restrictions on the website and make sure there is enough to do for any real little ones that are going to be visiting. Um, and finally, if you're going to Fantasyland, you've got to go into Cologne and go and check it out. They've got an absolutely amazing cathedral Cathedral. At Christmas, we've got the winter markets with a great too. And honestly, it's amazing to go and visit. When you go into these parks, I definitely recommend immerse yourself in the local culture. Go and see these things. Cologne Cathedral is one of the most impressive things I've ever seen out of all the countries I've been to. So make time for seeing local culture and local attractions as well. Um, but there you go. That is the theme park worldwide travel guide to visiting Fantasyland. As always, I hope that these videos are really informative um, and these more than ever. I want to make it as easy as possible for you to get out there and enjoy the parks. Of course, I'll always try to answer as many questions as I can do. If there's something that I've not covered in this video, comment below and I'll try my best to help you out with that. But along with that as well, it's worth, you know, having exploring your options, looking at different options and flights. And these are the ways that I've done it. I'm sure there's many other ways that you can travel out there to the park as well. So um, that is what it's all about. It's putting your own stamp on it, but also making it as easy as you can for yourself to get out there. But like I say, for, for me, I think traveling on the on public transportation is the fun way to do it but if you want the ease of it then driving there is fantastic too so there we go thanks for joining me in the first one of these travel guides loads more to come what park am i going to be covering next it is another park in germany i'm going to be covering europa park which is located in rust so that's going to be coming up next for you all here in this series i'm sean sandbrook thanks for joining me in the first ever theme park worldwide travel guide and that leaves me with one final thing to say get out there and keep on riding see you in the next video